The cathedral's neighborhood is a fascinating place. In the past few minutes, I've seen beautiful people dressed to the nines going to a cathedral funeral, and hipsters coming out of coffee shops, and yuppies coming out of their gentrified condos, and a number of homeless people simply looking for a place to spend the day. One of the most interesting of them was a gentleman, very articulate, who came up to me and implored me to give up my satanic ways. He said he'd been raised in a satanic cult, a cult of sacrifices, and he urged me to become a follower of Jesus Christ instead. I told him I was, and he didn't need to worry about me, but I'm not sure he went away convinced. Sunday morning at Denver's Cathedral of St. John is enough to make a traditional Episcopalian drool. The Gothic building, dating from 1911, can't help but draw your eye and heart to God. The stained glass windows seem like glimpses of heaven. The long nave leads you to the rood screen and chancel, where voices of angels sing like I only wish I could. Along with the incense, prayers ascend in this space five times on a Sunday. Three morning Eucharists, choral evensong, and a fresh expression of worship called the wilderness. At the Cathedral of St. John, you know you're part of the full company of saints and angels gathered round the altar, the faithful praising God across decades and centuries. Alongside all this stunning Anglican tradition, you find the wilderness, aptly named both for the ministry setting of the cathedral's patron, St. John the Baptist, and because this service takes you somewhere you don't quite recognize but want to explore. During my visit, the music paired classic hymn texts with rhythms and scales from the Middle East, sounds that may not say worship as we know it, but that draw your heart into a mystery you want to know better. Peace band of professional musicians offer a sound many worshipers say is the wilderness, along with the candles and the incense and the prayer stations. If the fresh expression I visited in Boston was all about building community, the wilderness is all about the worship. Worship that drew about 65 people, even while the Broncos game was heading into overtime. Just as the music there defies easy labels, the worship itself defies categorization. It's certainly different from Sunday morning, but all the pieces of a traditional Eucharist are there. It is carefully managed and tightly orchestrated informality, an experience of the divine that revels in paradox and bathes in mystery. People sneak in and people sneak out. Longtime St. John's members, neighborhood people with million dollar homes, and street people who, by the way, had some of the best insights at the dinner and class afterward. It's not a service that binds people into intimate community, and no one apologizes for that. As one best remember told me, the wilderness is a refuge, a safe place to explore the mystery of God on your own terms and at your own pace, whether or not you know the name of the person who's lighting the candle next to you. <laughs> 